Well, it's great to be back on air with another devotional, had phone camera problems and then uh, got a new one and got stuck over at the at Wyangala Dam <laughs> camping over the weekend and crazy times. And I can tell you, it was a time when uh, we were three dads with a whole bunch of kids and we we prayed, prayed that God would rescue us, that enabled us to get out. And uh, God answered that prayer and very appropriate that today's passage is all about prayer and speaking to God and bringing our hearts and concerns to him. He invites us to do it. Let's see what James has got to say as we head towards the end of the book. We're in James chapter 5 and we pick it up at verse 13. Is any among you suffering? He should pray. Is anyone cheerful? He should sing praises. Is anyone among you sick? He should call for the elders of the church and they are to pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. The prayer of faith will save the sick person, and the Lord will raise him up. If he's committed sins, he will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another, and pray for one another that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is very powerful in its effect. Elijah was a human being as we are, and he prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and for three years and six months it did not rain on the land. Then he prayed again, and the sky gave rain, and the land produced its fruit. Well, what is he telling us to do? Uh, Pray, 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 no matter the circumstances. And you might have lots of questions about uh, what he's promising there, but the, the point is to pray. If you're unhappy, pray. If you're happy, give thanks to God, pray to him. Right? And so whatever is going on in your life, bring your life, your concerns, your decisions, your uh, every, everything, the, the, today's day and what's happening ahead to God. Uh, I'm running a funeral later on this afternoon. I should be praying for that and we'll pray at the end of the service for Sue Waddell's funeral that it will be a time of great comfort for the family, that it will be a time of uh, encouragement and of pointing to the gospel that we might find hope in our darkness and strengthen our grief and light in our darkness in 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 the gospel of Jesus Christ, who has died and risen again. He is a wonderful saviour and he invites us to pray. But the thing that I guess people worry about in this passage is this bit about the sick person and what is it being promised? The prayer of faith will save the sick person and the Lord will raise him up. If he committed sins, he will be forgiven. For some Christians, they go, well, see, if I... I uh, there's a promise there that God will always heal people, that no matter what sickness, if you pray with enough faith or the right faith, God is guaranteed to make them better. And it doesn't matter how bad the disease is or the trouble that they're in, God's guaranteeing it here. Uh, but that's just not what it's saying. Uh, uh, you know, of course we should pray and God can do anything and we should pray for the sick, even uh, those who might be facing terminal illness because God can do miracles and amazing things. But that is not what this is promising. What is it saying? It's the Lord will save him, that he will be raised up. On, and when the Bible talks about being raised up, it's, it's always at the last day, the resurrection day, he will be raised. So what you should be doing is praying for people who are sick, Christian brothers and sisters, that God would be with them. By all means, pray that God would heal them of this physical ailment. But even while it's looking forward to that day of resurrection and saying, God, God's faithful, he's going to answer you. And there will be no sickness or mourning or death or crying or pain for the old order of things will have passed away in the new heavens and earth. And so God's not backing out of his promise here. That, that is what he is promising here. Uh, because he goes on, the prayer of faith will save the sick person. The Lord will raise him up at the last day. Uh, and if he's committed sins, he will be forgiven and so we, our prayers can have a powerful effect on the way that someone who uh, is struggling and maybe you know, they're, they're having doubts with God, that God will work in their lives. And that's the promise here. That, and that's an even bigger miracle, isn't it? That God really is promised to, to forgive and to work in their life, to save them. He may well heal them as well of their physical ailment, but he's promising. What is he promising? to save them, to take them to be his child uh, forever. Uh, got the funeral today and you know, I'm sure we're going to be reminded that God has a home for us. And Jesus said at the, the Last Supper, do not be afraid, trust in God, trust also in me. My Father's house and many rooms I'm coming. I'm going to prepare a place for you and I'll come back and take you to be with me because I am the way, the truth and the life. 
He is the way to the Father. And so that is the promise that's being made here. But don't doubt that prayer is powerful. The prayer of a righteous person is very powerful in effect. And he gives the example of Elijah. But it's interesting, yeah, because Elijah prayed and it stopped raining. And then he prayed and then it did rain uh, for three years, you know, drought and then floods. Uh, and, <coughs> and uh, but you go back and you look at the, the passages and in each occasion, God told him to start pray for it. So it's interesting. God said, I'm going to bring a drought. Why don't you pray for it? And he did. So what does it mean to pray with faith? It's to pray in line with God's promises, to pray in line with his sure word and to ask, you can ask anything and everything, right? You could ask God for parking spots for here you saw toe or anything, but God's made promises about that. With Elijah, he heard God's word about what God was going to do and he said, Lord, bring it on. If that's what these people need, uh, then I'm going to pray for you to do that, to fulfill your word. And God did. And so uh, God is faithful, prayer is powerful, but it also looks back to the promises that Solomon made when he built the temple. And in 1 Kings, in the first few chapters, he builds the temple of the Lord and he prays this amazing prayer. And he says, no matter what situation your people find themselves in, whether they are in exile because they've sinned and you've cast them away, if they look back to you and to this place and pray, Lord, forgive their sins. Uh, if they're happy and they look back, you know, may they always be called to give attention to you, to look back to your temple and to pray. We're not called to look to a physical temple in Jerusalem. We're called to look to God and to the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the temple that was torn down and rebuilt after three days, guaranteeing hope for the future. But what it, uh, Elijah was doing that. It was a time of great darkness in Israel because of the sin of the country and of the leaders and even of the priests and the kings. And uh, he looked back to the temple and he prayed and he prayed and he prayed and he prayed in line with what God had told him and the promises for punishment on the nation and for rescue. And uh, God did that. He had promised that he would. Elijah believed that promise and he did it. And look what God did. He did amazing things. Uh, um, and people were turned around because of it. And that is, in the end, what God is in the business of doing, turning hearts towards him. It was a, it was a time when only 7,000 people still followed God in the whole of the nation of Israel, millions of people. And yet God said, I have my own. And from there, his word went out effectively through the prophets and as they stood firm, as they prayed. And so that, that's what the example is we're being called to do, to hear God's word, to respond in prayer, to pray for the things we know that he's promised to do and in line with his character uh, and, and be it for sick people, for happy. And when you're happy, when you're cheerful, we'll sing songs of praises, pray, 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 pray. Uh, don't let prayer disappear from your life. It's so easy to do. Um, there's a, a book written a few years ago that uh, I think the title was better than the book, Too Busy Not to Pray. Uh, people say they're too busy to pray, but you're life's surrounded by so many things. You should be too busy not to pray. I mean, you've got to commit everything into God's hands and say, okay, I've got to especially now have time out and make sure that I'm doing that, relating to my Heavenly Father, bringing my concerns to Him, and uh, whether I'm in times of happiness or sadness, bringing whatever's on my heart to my God, my Saviour, my King, my friend, in whose company I'm going to be spending eternity because he's made his promises. Praying for those around us, not just for ourselves, praying for his glory and kingdom as he's told us to. When the, he, Jesus was asked to teach the disciples how to pray, what do you say? Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done. And so God would focus prayers, praying for God's glory, God's kingdom, God's uh, will to be done for, th they're the things that really matter to God. Yes, yes, pray for your daily bread, your needs, and pray for their biggest need, which is to forgiveness of sins and be led not into temptation, but um, but but also be kept focused on God's kingdom, glory, power, and how other people are relating to Him. Because that's when you pray for God's kingdom to come, you're praying for other people, for the world to be righted, for people to be sorted out, to put their trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Why don't we pray now, since we've been told to do it and urged to do it? 
uh, I promise to pray for the funeral this afternoon, but also for, <coughs> and we'll pray for our prayer lives. Our Father, we thank you that you invite us uh, and, and even command us to pray in happy times, in sad times, when things are going well, when they're going poorly. Help us not to forget you, to put our lives in your hands, <coughs> to remember <coughs> that you <coughs> have made great promises to us in the Lord Jesus Christ of forgiveness and salvation of life with you and to help us to trust that you will fulfill every promise and to pray in line with it. Lord, take us home. Come, Lord Jesus, come. We pray for the funeral this afternoon that in the grieving of the family and all the friends and church family that we would look to you for comfort and strength. We pray that you would do your work, that you would bring light in darkness, healing, to broken hearts, uh, help us to find comfort in your saving words, knowing that uh, Sue, who is your child, uh, and such a great example of faith, uh, and a great example of prayer, we thank you for the encouragement she was, that always praying for us. And we pray, please, that we might be like that, praying in line with Jesus' command for your glory and kingdom and your will to be done for our daily needs, for uh, our spiritual health and life, that we wouldn't sin, that we wouldn't be led into temptation, and help us to be praying for other people, right? As uh, whether they are sick or whatever condition they're in, that you would save them, that you would raise them up on the last day, that you would bring forgiveness of their sins. Help us to be constantly in prayer for that. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. God bless everyone. Uh, great to be back with you. God bless, catch you again for another devotion tomorrow.